You a comedian? Yeah? Tell me a joke. That is the most common question comedians get asked in the entire world. It's as if people believe that a comedian lives in like this funnier universe that somehow whatever we see or we live around and notice is just funnier than everyone else. The truth is we're not in a parallel universe. We're just taking the same buses and same roads and everything as everyone else. However, what we're simply doing is we're looking at something and not just concluding that this is an A, this is a B. We're looking at thinking, huh, how could I play with this? What's weird about this item? Think about it now, like we're going through a really weird time, you know, during COVID, everyone's got their face masks on. And if you really think about it, this is a perfect opportunity for all these funny, funny stories to share with everyone. So for example, we've all built this new addiction that we cannot resist hand sanitizer, especially the hand sanitizer machines, right? You see the machine, you're like, oh yeah, it's automatic. I gotta use this. I mean, I mean, I, I, it's just right there. It's just asking for it to be my attention, right? So this is what happened to me one time. I was at a restaurant, you know, lining up one by one to use the machine before going in. And when it got to my turn, I put my hand into the machine and I heard the sound, but nothing came out. Now, let me ask you this. What would you do in a situation like this? Would you do what I did, which is basically the emperor's new clothes and just look at my hand and have that one pressure moment of like, oh, what do I do? Everyone's looking at me. This is the moment of truth. Like, uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I totally got hand sanitizer. They wouldn't know any better. Oh, I'm going to go eat some food, <laughs> right? Then, of course, I quickly turn around to notice what is the next person going to do. I'm looking over there like, huh, I wonder what you're going to do, right? Because I know the sanitizer machine is empty. I know that. So let's see what this person does. Are they going to do the same thing as me, Emperor's new clothes, and fake it? So I see the guy's hand. I hear the quick sound. And I'm waiting, I'm like, come on, do it. What's he gonna do? And it's same thing as me. He's like, uh, yeah, totally got sanitizer. Oh yeah, fantastic, right? The craziest thing is that we were at an Indian restaurant, which means everyone's using their hands to eat. So no one's got clean hands, but we're all in denial because we just don't, don't want to lose face, right? So think of it this way. Was that situation particularly funny? Was the sanitizer machine funny? No, it, it wasn't. All I was doing was not concluding that, oh, the, the machine's empty. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? I'm trying to play with it. I'm like, huh, how does this make me feel? Why, why am I feeling this pressure right now when my hand is under the machine and everyone behind me is just waiting? And I'm like, why do I have this crazy pressure of I've got to show them that this works? I don't want to be the one who has to do the work of like, excuse me, <laughs> it's empty, right? I don't want to be that guy. It's taking that idea and not just ending it with saying it's empty, that's it, but going like, huh, what if this, this machine is playing a trick on me? Is it my friend? Is there an automatic machine? Is my hand not human enough? What's going on? So there's a lot of ways to look at the same situation. And a comedian, instead of saying, we're trying to live in a funnier world than you, we're simply seeing the same thing as yourself and trying to say it in a funnier way. All right, think of it that way. That's all we're really doing. So the truth is you have the ability as well. So when you think about it, everything, has a funny angle. We believe, you have to believe that item is funny and somehow be like, I, I, I see something, I don't know what it is, but I see it. So it exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Very often people will say, there's nothing funny about this, but you know, you have to believe it, there, there is. I just haven't noticed a small nuance over there. So I'll give you a simple challenge, okay? Uh, let's do this. Think of an item, think of an object, and you're not allowed to say the name. You have to find ways to describe it and convince me and let me know what it is, right? How would you describe it? So let's just say a uh, simple, simple example. Let's say uh, a brick, right? A simple brick that we used to build and everything. Like, how would you describe it? Have a little think about it. I'll give you three seconds time over here. Have a little think. How would you describe a brick, right? Would you be like, okay, it's a shame, of it. right? You'd probably be like, oh, I don't know, it, it, it's heavy. It's heavy, right? You probably will think, oh yeah, it's got different angles. It's kind of rigid, you know, we, it's, it's kind of strong and firm as well. So all of a sudden now, you don't just see a brick and you know what a brick is. You're seeing something heavy. So it gives you ideas, right? Oh, you can do so much more with a heavy brick. So if I asked you, what would you do with a brick? What would you do? Highly likely your first idea is like, uh, well, build a brick wall, or build a house, you know? I don't know, maybe uh, if you're really pushing me, I might take the brick and I don't know, uh, throw it at you because you're annoying me right now with all this extra work I'm doing. Now, 
Not to say I encourage the idea of throwing a brick, but what I'm saying is that you see, on one end, it could build a house, stability. On the other end, it's a weapon, you know, it's all these different angles you can play with it. Now you might say, okay, yeah, so build a wall, you know, and throw it at someone. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, what else can you do with a brick? Now that's the thing. You have to believe that an item has unlimited potential. It can be used in any sort of way. It's you, the user, who usually limits it. Okay, so it's not the reverse item that, oh, this has no ideas, I can't do anything with it, give me something else. But it's more like, I've got to find different ways to look at the same thing. So for example, let's see if I ask you this. Instead of just saying the brick, you know, A and B and C, think of it this way. If I asked you, what would Bruce Lee, what would Bruce Lee do with the brick? Immediately, you probably think of new ideas. Oh, I don't know, he'll, he'll put them one on top of each other and, you know, I try to smash them. So all of a sudden now it's a martial arts training tool, right? No longer building walls, no longer a weapon. It's a martial arts training tool. Fantastic. Uh, let's look at another idea. Um, what would a musician, a musician, what would a musician use a brick for? Right? If you think about it, well, I mean, percussion, maybe we could do percussion, you know, just hit the brick and go, tap, 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 tap. Okay, have a beat over there. So now suddenly, Two minutes ago, you were thinking, well, what more? Build a wall, build a brick, what more? You thought of two new ideas, the martial art training tool, the percussion instrument. What would a chef use a brick for? Let's get a bit more difficult. What would a chef do with a brick? You might say, a chef? Um, um, well, uh, oh, I know, a uh, barbecue pit, we could do that. A barbecue pit would be good. Yeah, you could do that, brick oven as well. You know, it's a very common thing. Let's get more challenging. What would a doctor do with a brick? Now, you might be thinking, a doctor? Why, why would a doctor use a brick? And that's exactly it. In comedy and what we're really doing is we're trying to find two things that may not be related and somehow connect them together. All right, Two objects, if they're, if they're so close to each other, it's easy. Like let's say a builder and a brick, you're like, it's right over here. Okay, that's so easy, you know, so builder, you brick, build something. Oh, so easy, but so boring as well. But imagine a doctor and the brick, all of a sudden it's so much more further apart. You're like, oh, how would I connect them together? Maybe a doctor simply would use the brick to build a chair, right? Maybe a bed. Who knows, right? Maybe a little shelter to hide in. So this is the idea that you're simply trying to find a normal A and a normal B and somehow finding a way to connect them and make sense together to create a funny C. All right? That's all we're really doing. So it's not that the C doesn't exist. It's just that you have to find A and B and somehow find that line in between and make it come to existence. All right, so think of it that way. Now, let's go back to a few more examples. You know, I said the brick and everything. So the challenge here is can you every single day do me one favor? Just look for one interesting thing, okay? One interesting thing, not funny, just interesting. Now, day one, find one item that's interesting to you, write it down. Day two, find another item that is interesting to you and write it down. Now, day three, try to challenge it and take day one and day two and somehow connect them together. Can you somehow, like clearly these two things don't make sense together, right? So somehow find a way to make them make sense and explain them together. And that will give you all these new angles. So for example, I have a friend who's a magician. Oh man, like every single time this guy loves to show off. Now the truth is, magicians have it a bit harder because as a comedian, you know, if you just crack a joke, it's pretty much okay. You know, hey, oh, he's a funny guy, he just cracked a joke. But a magician cannot just constantly do magic tricks you can't be like, oh, is this your card? It's like, why would you, do? I don't even know you. Why do you have a card that's mine? I don't understand. Why would you do that, right? So my friend and myself, we're having lunch, you know, magician, comedian, you know, this is the best combination. We're having lunch. The meal is done and we ask for the bill. The bill arrives and my friend takes the bill. He's like, hey, Biff, hey, Biff, check it out, check it out. <laughs> the bill is gone. Haha. <laughs> I'm like, why, why would you, why would you do that? Like, what was the point of that? Like, you do realize that even after you make it disappear, we still have to pay, right? You, you do not realize that. Okay, that's good. Okay, and then now that you made the bill disappear, I don't even know how much. You're wasting paper, okay? So think of it this way. Magician makes something disappear on stage, totally makes sense. Magician makes something disappear in a restaurant, doesn't make sense. But somehow I connect them together and made a funny comment, right? Made a funny angle. And that's what I'm saying. All we're really doing is something, find ourselves and challenge it to say, how can I connect these two things? They're not connected, but I'm gonna make them connected and make the connection come into existence, right? So 
daily life, simple things in life. Let's say like the bus stop. The bus stop is a, is, a, is a fun thing I like to talk about because when I'm at the bus stop, I'm observing people. What are they doing? What are they doing? And I notice every time I'm at a bus stop, especially nowadays, you know, you get to see people with their face masks. What are their face mask habits? Do they touch it? Do they not? And all these different styles. Think about it this way. The face mask in the beginning of the pandemic used to be a simple tool for protection. We just wanted the mask on our face to protect ourselves. That's all we cared about. But after a while, it's become a fashion statement, right? You got to think about, oh, today I'm wearing a red face mask. I, I got to make sure it matches my clothes. I can't have, you know, a yellow one. It doesn't seem to match better. Or maybe I have a blue face mask and all of a sudden I get a mask and a different shirt. So all these new things coming up. You got little designs as well. My friends got polka dots. I've got polka dots. We got different designs on it. But my favorite is when I see face masks with cartoon characters on them. That's my absolute favorite, right? Sometimes you get, you know, smiley faces. You might get a dinosaur or dragons and stuff like that. But my absolute favorite was when I saw a face mask with the cartoon character, Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty, the character, does not have a mouth, all right? You cannot have a character that doesn't have a mouth to be on a face mask that is meant to cover your own mouth, okay? That, that's, just, that's just going too far, all right? But to me, that was hilarious. I'm like, wow, well, we're going there. We're really going there. We're challenging the norm. There's no mouth or yes mouth, right? So again, at a bus stop, there's more than just people watching. It's also think about it. What is a bus stop like? If I asked you, like, how would you describe a bus stop? You would say, well, I don't know. I mean, you wait for the bus. Yeah, but what more? Like, talk about the feelings. What do you think? What are you thinking when you're waiting for the bus? Isn't it just like you're waiting for your favorite idol to show up, right? Like, like as if I'm a big fan of the 23 number bus and I'm like, oh man, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I've been waiting all day. I want to get on this bus. Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The, the, the TV display says the next bus is in two minutes. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God. Oh, all the other fans are here as well. These other guys are standing there waiting for the bus, all excited. The bus arrives. Everyone's waving their hands. Ah, me, look at me, look at me. Ha, I'm your fan. Oh, I love you. Yay. Right? Everyone's got their money out. Like, I'm ready to give you my money. Come on. I'm, I love you. You're my idol. So in that way, the bus is so much more exciting. We're not just simply take a bus. We're like, oh, I'm looking for my idol. I'm so excited about it. And then you get on the bus and you look at other things. And when I got on the bus one time, I noticed that, man, this is so fascinating to see how people use the octopus car to pay for their bus fare, right? Because here in Hong Kong, we, we love efficiency. And the octopus card is such a prime example where, you know, you want to make sure you save all that time because, you know, you get your wallet out. You don't take the card out. The wallet has the card in it and you just hit it on the machine and boop deduct your money. Fantastic save of time. But you know, in Hong Kong, we're never satisfied, right? We want to always up the game and get more efficient. So I remember seeing a lady, she had a wallet in her handbag. Handbag, did not take the wallet out, took the handbag and started smacking around. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it. All right, done, paid her fees. Then I saw another guy, took it to another level. He had his wallet with his octopus card in his back pocket. Gets on the bus, you guessed it. Goes to the machine and goes, do it. And I was like, wow, that is another level of efficiency and laziness, right? But think about it, in this time of COVID, you want to avoid all this hand contact and stuff like that. And this is a fantastic idea. Probably he wants to do it for cleanliness, right? However, if he wants to sustain this idea, he's got to do it everywhere. Like, what if he has to refill his octopus card? Does he go to the convenience store and walks up and be like, hey, excuse me, um, yeah, um, $100, please. Right here, yeah, okay, at dude. Thank you. Refilled. I feel full already, right? Doesn't make sense, right? Now, again, the situation is a little bit funnier, but that's also the way you describe it. But taking another thing, I can say, oh, wow, you know, normally it would be the butt of the joke, but turns out the joke is in his butt. Haha, -ha, right? Stuff like that. So simply looking at the same thing and finding different angles and not concluding that, oh, he's just uh, refilling his octopus card. What's, what's the big deal? I don't, I don't see what's special about it. But trying to describe it differently, you get to find the funnier angle. And with that equipped in your mind, you can probably make anything funny. And that is why I hope with this, one day I can be on the street, see you and walk up to you and say, oh yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. You tell me a joke. Thank you.